Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the conversation around Catholic sexuality. I'm Ellen. And I'm Kathleen. Welcome to the show. All right, welcome back to another Charting Toward Intimacy episode. Today, we are going to be talking about getting out of a rut. I'm very excited Mm. to talk about this. I think this is something that a lot of us get into. Everybody. Everybody. Like, it's just, it just happens. It happens with life. Life just goes. And so, yeah, we are going to be giving some practical tips about that. Kathleen and I both have some uh, some tips from our mm-hmm. own experiences. And yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we get there, we answer a listener question at the beginning of every podcast episode. And if you have a question, if you would like your question to be answered on a podcast episode, uh, you can submit it in the open question box. A link to that is in the show notes. Uh, feel free to submit questions at any time. I We answer a question at the beginning of every episode. And then at the end of the month, I take all of the questions that were submitted and I record a longer form Q&A video uh, that is available inside of the Charting Toward Intimacy exclusive community. You can join that for only $5 a month. All right. Let's get to our question. There we go. Okay. So the question is, can you give some advice about the two week wait when trying or avoiding pregnancy and the frustration that comes with it? So this actually took Kathleen and I a little bit to make sure we understood (laughs) what the question was asking. Let's define that two week wait. So here's what we're thinking this person is asking about. (laughs) If you're the person who asked this question please feel free to elaborate and we'd be happy to answer it again if we totally misunderstood your question. But the two week wait, typically what people mean by the two week wait is the wait between ovulation and your period starting. So or a positive pregnancy test or a positive pregnancy test, right? So that two week wait, like when you're trying to achieve a pregnancy is kind of like, oh my gosh, when can I test? When can I test? When can I test? Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, the two week wait, when you're trying to avoid pregnancy, maybe you used a day you shouldn't have or something like that. And so kind of that. Still, when can I test? When can I test? Right. It's like, uh, am I pregnant or not? I hope I'm not. We're trying to avoid. But a different kind of anxiety. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I think both sides really have something majorly in common. Yeah. Is that truly, according to the catechism, according to our church, patience is a virtue. Mm -hmm. And we are called to build virtue, to practice virtue, to become stronger in virtues. And this is actually an episode on patience is something that is in the works in in the next several weeks you'll see a specific episode about patience. So this is like kind of a teaser for that. Look out for that mm, episode. There you go. It'll be fun. But I think really what we're dealing with on both sides of this is practicing patience. And that that's not, I mean, I'm not saying that patience is easy. I just had an experience in my own life that was the most annoying practice of patience I have personally ever experienced. I was so frustrated the whole time. And so I'm with you here that this is not an easy thing to do. My, my suggestion when I struggle with patience is what's really at the root for me is a lack of trust in God's plan and God's will. Um, And so I rely on the litany of trust. I really like Mm the litany of trust for those kind of things. And a lot of times what I'll do when I look through the litany of trust is I'll kind of like, if I don't have time to pray the whole thing, I know this is like (laughs) cheater, but I kind of like, I just like skim through to the ones that apply to my situation. Mm -hmm. And I like pray those. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Cheater version. (laughs) No, I mean, I think, I think it's fair. And I think that going along exactly with what you're saying is this, this need to kind of remind yourself that like ultimately like we do need to trust in God's plan. And so at the end of the day, you know, it's one or the other and it doesn't matter. Right. Like, because like, I know you, 
because we've all been there, right? Like, I need to know. I need to know. That's fine. <laughs> but like, just realizing that like, okay, but I don't need to focus on this every moment of the day because the end result ultimately doesn't matter because it's going to be God's will for me, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's going to be God's will. It's going to be what brings me to heaven, right? Like, it doesn't matter. I have to tell you, like, your voice was in my head during like this recent experience of patience oh, that I had Lord to go have through. have mercy. But no, but like <laughs> basically saying that, like you've told me those kinds of things all the time. Like God is only going to give me exactly what I need for my sanctification. Yeah. And like your mm-hmm. voice was in my head so much of just say those kinds Aww. of things of like, like it doesn't matter. It, it ultimately doesn't matter what the result is. I will find it out eventually. Yeah. And it's going to be God's will. Yeah. And mm-hmm. It is going to work out. Something that Leah Darrow says that I just like love and have it's been in my head lately is everything is always working out for me. So true. Mm, yeah. So true, right? And so like you can repeat that in your head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The other thing I would say that because we are like, it, like patience is hard, right? Like virtue is hard. Um, it's hard to build. It's hard to practice. So it's re- it's important to remember that in order to obtain virtue, we really need the help of the Holy Spirit, like, Mm -hmm. and, and the saints and praying for us and and everything. So another thing that can really help um, kind of eat up that time where you're waiting is a novena. A novena is nine days of prayer, right? So if you just take each day focusing on making sure you get your novena in, right? Like that, that will take up nine days. It's not Mm -hmm. to say it's going to be perfect, but do a novena for patience, do a novena for whatever the result is going to be, right? Like for peace, um, just whatever, whatever it is, you know, find a yeah, good novena. Yeah, or a, a favorite saint. A saint, exactly. Saint Gerard kind of is, you. is a good one yes. for mothers, mm-hmm. right? If you're trying to achieve pregnancy or just, you know, just a favorite saint. Yeah, whoever, just to kind of be with you, you like. to walk with you through the impatience, right? You know what I didn't understand um, for a long time is that, <laughs> this is going to sound silly, but like you can do novenas anytime you want to. Like you don't you don't have That's to true. say wait for the Saint Therese novena like for her feast day. You nope. can do it whenever you want. Anytime you want. Yeah, it's true. And I highly recommend checking out Pray More Novenas because they you can like set it up and they'll give you an email reminder all nine of the days. I'll put a link to Pray More Novenas in the show idea. notes cuz yeah. I I love using them. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Anything else to add to that, Kathleen? No, I think that's it. That's All right. It. So good luck. Godspeed. Right. <laughs> God, God patience instead of Godspeed, right? <laughs> that's true. God patience. Um, All right. So let's jump into the podcast episode, the main, main episode topic, getting out of a rut. So let's talk for just a second about kind of how we get into ruts. Human beings... If we're going to just, just speak philosophically here for a mm-hmm. moment, human beings are creatures of habit. We like routines. Like if you are a parent of young children, you've probably heard it in a book or an Instagram account you follow or something, but like toddlers do best when they have a schedule. Kids, elementary school kids do best when they have a schedule. And so even if it's like loose, but like still sort of like we do this and then we do this and we do this, they like schedules, they like routines. That's because human nature likes schedules and likes routines. So on the one hand, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with a routine. If you and your spouse have a routine when it comes to sex and you are both feeling kind of fulfilled by that and and happy with that, there's I just want to like start by saying there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now. No. You're probably listening to this episode because you're not happy <laughs> with the routine that you're in. So that is what we'll talk about today. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's so this is something that I can speak very closely to. <laughs> I mean, because I think that yeah, like and especially like if you are in if you find yourself in a place like like Ellen and I, right? You've got kids, you've got schedules, you know, you've got like daily stressors, you've got extra stressors, like you've got all it's a lot going on and especially 
as the the mother, right? Like you are keeping so many balls in the air that sometimes at the end of the day, like sex is the very last thing on your mind. Mm-hmm. And and because it takes so much intentional mental work for us to like prepare and be ready for sex, you might not feel like you have that in you, right? Like and mm-hmm. and this can often lead to a rut. Let me tell you what I just experienced. My husband and I, at the end of September, celebrated 11 years of marriage, and we decided it had been three years. So, like, yeah, it was like 2020, the last time we went away, like just the two of us for like a weekend to celebrate our anniversary or something like that, other than like maybe an overnight for a wedding or something, right? Mm-hmm. Like three years since we had really gone away. So, the baby's a year old now. We were like, Kathleen, okay. I don't think. I don't think my husband and I have ever like really gone Bro. away like w- since kids like you got to do something about that that's all yeah. I'm gonna say like we've gone away for like one <laughs> night we went away for three nights it, we were in such need that we made it a long weekend my husband called off of work for Friday we went Thursday night after everyone was settled and we didn't come back until Sunday that's amazing so it was amazing and let me tell you why it was so important we struggle like with with sex a lot of the time just because i it does take me a lot of mental work to prepare Mm -hmm. and to be ready and at the end of the day i don't always have the mental capacity right so it's it's a constant and my husband's always got the capacity always so it's (laughs) like it it is a struggle that we that we have and we've had for 11 years to get away what I experienced in in just removing myself from my daily routine, right, for three nights, for three days, whatever, was the ability to just let everything go. Like, I did not have children in the house that could, like, wake up at any moment or come away from their TV show to find me for something, right? Like, I didn't have to worry about that. So there was a freedom just in our sexual encounter to just be like, there is nobody else to interrupt this. Like Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about anybody else. Right. I didn't have any to do list that I had to get done or worry about. Right. Mm -hmm. Like every day it's like, you've got to make dinner. You've got to get everybody up in the morning. You've got to make breakfast, pack lunches, get them ready for school, make sure uniforms are clean, catch up on the laundry. Like all of these things that I do on a daily basis that are just like constantly taking up space in my head. I did not have to worry about. They were non-existent. Mm -hmm. All I had to worry about was waking up in the morning, relaxing in bed with my husband for a little bit and figuring out where we were going to go get breakfast. Like it was a true delight. Like I Mm. cannot even tell you. And I would say it, it just really opened up our, like my, my mental capacity and my freedom to enjoy sex. Mm. And it was, it was just great. And now it's a lot of work, especially if you do have kids, it's a lot of work to get away. It's a, I mean, and let me tell you, like up until like two days before we were living, I was trying to figure out like, who's going to get these kids to school and this kid's got to go to school over here. And this one's going over here. Like we got kids all over the place right now. It was a lot of work. And I kept saying to my mom and to my in-laws who were like pitching in to kind of take care of everybody. Like, this is why we never go away. Like, this is exhausting (laughs) just to like get there is exhausting. Right. And, but let me tell you that it is worth the effort. It is worth the money. You will like, oh, maybe we shouldn't really spend that right now. I get that because we are there all the time. So Mm -hmm. I get that. But let me tell you, find a way. Mm -hmm. Like, allocate the funds however you have to. If you need to save up, I don't care. Because that money, it is going to be some of the best money you ever spend to just get yourselves away. And and the time. Make the money, make the time. Like, that's it. It's never going to be easy, but it will always be beyond worth it to give yourselves just solitude. Mm Mm-hmm. And let's talk about why that works is on the one hand, stress is the highest factor in like your sexual desire and your ability to receive pleasure. If you have been in the orgasm course, you have heard me talk about how stress is a big issue for this. And if you want to go into this more, 
I'll, I will link, (laughs) I will link the orgasm course down there because I do talk about stress quite a bit as one of the biggest contributing factors to your ability to receive pleasure as Mm -hmm. well as your like want your desire to receive pleasure. Um, and so, and I'm talking about like what people call libido or like sexual desire or whatever, like stress is going to affect that. If you can take yourself away, um, and not, I think sometimes what happens is maybe mom goes away, but then all that you think about is, okay, who's taking care of this? Is this getting done? Is this getting done? If you're going to go away, you have to make sure that you also turn that off and trust the people that you left your kids with. If that's your in-laws or your parents or a close friend or, you know, something like that, or a sibling, you have to trust the people that you left your kid with and, and turn that off and say, okay, well, yes, my kids are, things are going to go different than I would do them. And that is okay. (laughs) Yeah. And honestly, what helped me this particular time around, because there was a lot going on over that weekend. Like I had kids that needed to get to dance class. I had kids that needed to get to play practice. Like I had kids that needed to go places, right? Um, Horseback riding. Like we had events happening. Yeah. (laughs) We had events, right? So it wasn't just like, oh, school on Friday and then the weekend's free. No, there was stuff going on. I wrote out a detailed list of the schedule. I wrote out a schedule of like all the things that were happening. I wrote out the plans for each event, the times that they had to be there, the times they had to be picked up, what, how it works best. Like, and I don't like my mom's not an idiot. Like she didn't need all of that. Right. <laughs> like even like Josephine's nap time, I wrote down her regular nap times, you know, like I wrote everything down, how she takes a bottle, how she doesn't take a bottle, like all of it. I wrote it all down. And so my mom could figure it all out. But in case there was a problem, it was all written there. And so I didn't have to worry about it, right? Like, I didn't have to stress about it. It was just, okay, if she can't figure it out, it's written down. So don't have to think about it, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, and I think that really helps to get it off of your plate is, yeah, even if the people that you're leaving your kids with don't need that, you can you can feel like you did everything you could possibly do and you already answered all of the questions. And so it's like really nice to just get that off your plate. Okay. Let's talk about the other, some other ways that you can get out of a rut. So maybe going off away is just not at all possible for you right now. Maybe you have a very young baby that is just, that doesn't work at all or, or some other, some other reason. You know, I think what Kathleen said about make it work, figure it out. It is worth it. Absolutely. Like, please take that to heart. And I'm, you know, I'm eating my own words here. Cause I, I already admitted <laughs> that like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Listen, my husband and I but, haven't been away, but <laughs> it's true. It, I mean, but it does. It just takes effort. Um, it does. It takes effort. a lot. Of, it takes a lot. But of sometimes it is not possible. You're right because last year we celebrated 10 years and we had like a three month old. Yeah. So and it was like just... this is not a good year to go away. Right. Mm-hmm. We can't do that this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and like for me, like I don't have family anywhere nearby. Like I would have to take my kids. We'd have to physically go to my parents or my in laws. Mm-hmm. And then like go away somewhere near them or something mm-hmm. like that, um, right. which is totally an option. Like uh, it's just different, different kind of situation. But let's talk about some other kind of ways to get out of a rut. So the thing that going away does is it forces you out of your routine. And we are creatures of habit. We like that routine. It is very easy to stay in a routine. The problem is when that routine gets dry or it's not a good routine. So that's, you know, that's what we're talking about trying to get out of. So going away for a weekend, really, it throws the whole routine off, which can be very refreshing to the routine, right? Now you enter back into the routine with like a new refreshed mindset. So Mm -hmm. another great way to get out of a sex rut, and this isn't going to apply to everybody, but changing your intention with natural family planning can help you get out of a routine. Mm, okay? Interesting. Yeah. So let's say you have been trying to avoid pregnancy for six months, for nine months, for a year and a half, for five years. I don't know. 
if you switch your, your intention, that is going to kind of throw everything mm-hmm. off in a good way. And it's going to yeah. kind of force you out of that routine. Now let's flip side. Let's say you are maybe experiencing infertility or having a hard time getting pregnant, switch it, try to avoid for a couple of cycles. Or mm-hmm. if you feel very convicted that like you don't want to try to avoid schedule a week or two that you actually intentionally abstain from sex. So maybe schedule like starting from when your period starts to, you know, day 10 of your cycle or something, it's 10 days or, or whatever, or, or maybe like during kind of the luteal phase when you're already a little tired and don't really, you know, but like schedule specific time that you are saying, okay, we are going to abstain during this time. Yeah. And when you, this again, this is like, this is human nature. When you take something off of the table, when it's no longer an option, suddenly you start wanting it more. Yeah. And so, but like, here's the thing. If this is going to work, you actually have to stick to what you said. If you said, okay, we're going to, we're going to avoid, or we're going to abstain for this week. Even if like day three of the week, you're like, oh my gosh, I really want to, I really want to have sex. Like if this is going to work, you have to stick to the week that you set. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause otherwise then you're just going to like get right back into that routine. Like that one time might be fine, but you're just going to get right back into that routine. Yeah. Um, that's my recommendation. I mean, I'm not telling you when you can and cannot have sex. Like if you really want to have sex with your husband, like go ahead, I'm not (laughs) go, go for it. I'm (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you're right. It's like absence makes the heart grow fonder. The things mm-hmm. that you can't have, you want more, right? So if you do stick with it, just being like, okay, no, we said no, even though we want to, we said no, the desire is going to build. Mm-hmm. Another couple things that, that are coming to mind for me, two things. First is this idea that I am really, I have really been intrigued by lately because I've realized that I'm pretty awful at it <laughs> and I really want to like make an effort to get better is not looking at sex as just something that you have to do, right? Like because your husband wants it or because um, maybe even just because you want it or just because you're married and that's what you do. Like, but thinking of sex woo, more as a form of play mm. is something that's been so intriguing to me because I've realized that I tend to approach it as like, okay, like this is good. And so I have to do it. Like I, we need to prioritize this and do it because it's good for our marriage. It's good for us. God tells us that it's good. Like we, you know, like, and so everything ends up feeling very serious Mm. and very formal rather than having it just entering into it in a very lighthearted manner. Like, let's just like try something new. Let's, let's like, you like do some like games or like you know like, using like card decks or something like let's put on some music or food, like, or, or, like... food or whatever exactly but like really just starting to embrace this idea of sex being play mm-hmm. right like and because think of like little kids right like think of when little kids play that is how they grow in relationship with each other is through play it's how right? they learn too. It's right? how they learn. Exactly. It's how they learn. It's how they become friends. It's like, I, how many times do I take my kids to the park and they start playing with someone and then all of a sudden it's like, do you want to be my friend? Like they all ask that. Yeah. Like once they start playing, the question becomes, do you want to be my friend? Right. So it's a relationship that starts being built. Right. If we can approach sex with our spouse in the same way as like, hey, let's not just like make this very sterile and serious and like let's play for a little bit like it it just has a totally different effect on your relationship I imagine right like again like I need to start doing this so it's like (laughs) this these are my musings on this and why I need to do this more right this is actually Um, something again (laughs) this wasn't supposed to be like an advertisement for the orgasm course but I do have a section in there where I talk about play helping you like let silliness lead you to intimacy. Um, and that's, that's actually, it's huge. Like laughter can, can lead us into a form of intimacy that we can't get from like treating things seriously. Um, And laughter is actually extremely freeing for like the human body and the human soul. And Mm -hmm. that's why, like, it's, it's really interesting is like, if you, if you look at someone who is in deep 
grief. Sometimes it's really easy for them to laugh. Um, yeah. And that is, it's so good. Like if you, you've probably experienced like um, someone close to you has passed away and you're at the funeral and then you, you know, you have the reception and it's all very heavy and it's all, it's all very hard. Right. And then it's kind of the after of the funeral. And it, then it's just the close family and the really close friends that are still sticking around. And then everybody yeah. starts laughing. Everybody yeah. starts saying funny stories or thinking about this. Right. And it's, that it's is like the body needs it. Like the mm-hmm. soul needs it. Yeah. yeah. And so not that sex has anything to do with grief, but it's, it's like an, it's sometimes we can treat it as this like equally heavy thing. Yeah. Um, and so laughter can really help. And so that's when like trying a new position and ultimately failing at it is awesome. Yeah. So, that's so a, good. Right. That is funny. Or yeah. Or like playing with food. If you've never played with food before and you play with food and you're just like, this is ridiculous. What am I doing with this? Like whipped cream can or I don't know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think, I think that was, that was it. On yeah, my thought. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, no, I think that's, those are all really good points. And you know, just to emphasize that, like, yes, like make it fun. Like, try like what can you do that's the question that needs to be answered what can i do to make this more fun and less serious mm-hmm. the other thought i was going to say is um and this can be done like whether you're trying to abstain or not i listened to this one podcast um called your turned on desire the woman who does it her name is jamie andelin mm-hmm. and i think she has some really good points that she makes um, and just one fyi of them- like this is not a catholic podcast Correct. Beware, not a Catholic beware of some of the stuff that she recommends. Sorry. Yeah. Just a little yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, there. Just, a, just a caveat. Like we're not going to say it's like totally in line with church teaching everything, but, but there she does are have absolute, some, she does have some good stuff in there. Absolute like golden nuggets. And the one thing that I remember her talking about, is, um, like prioritizing making love and that mm. making love does not have to mean having sex. Right. So choosing to make love as much as you can in your day. Mm, so that means, like that. yes. So that means like, okay, maybe you're making dinner and you're what? like stressed because you're running late and whatever. And your husband comes up behind you and just like gives you a little kiss or like a tap on the butt or whatever. That means choosing in the moment to stop what you're doing. Stop the dinner for a second. Like even if it's for 30 seconds and to turn around and kiss him and give him affection back. Mm. Right. Like that is one short instance of choosing to create love in the moment. Right. And again, doesn't have to mean that needs to lead to sex. And even in times of abstinence, I know for we ended up in a huge rut early in our marriage and for years because I was taking our times of abstinence as like, okay, we need to like separate Mm. because Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's too hard for him. Like, it's too tempting. Like, it's too, like, right? And so he ended up, my husband ended up feeling, like, ignored and not loved or cared about for years whenever I was in my fertile window. And it ended up being, taking a lot of arguments and discussions and resentment and whatnot to realize, like, no, like, that's the opposite of what we should be doing. We should be finding new and different ways to connect, Mm -hmm. right? And so maybe you can physically connect still, just not through the sexual act, right? But, like, making sure you take that time to still find ways to physically come together, to connect. Maybe it's snuggling on the couch and watching a movie. Maybe it's just like making out and just like no hands allowed, right? Just like hands behind Ooh, your yeah. back and right? Like maybe you can do that, maybe Tie you can't. Up. And that's no. okay too, right? <laughs> but like whatever it is for you, maybe it's just taking a walk and holding hands, right? But finding ways to still stay physically connected to make love in other ways. I thought was a really important nugget that I needed to kind of pull out. Yeah. And if you Um, want a little bit more on that, if you didn't listen to last week's episode, go take a listen to that, especially the second half of it, where I talk about intentionally creating moments of non-sexual touch to help you like just grow fonder of your husband's touch. 
and I'm in that episode, I'm specifically talking about how that, that feeling of like every touch leads to sex and that frustration with that. But actually the antidote antidote to that is more touch. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, I think the antidote to a lot of things is actually more touch. And what Kathleen's pointing out here is like an antidote to this rut is like, is increasing that intimacy outside of the bedroom so that the intimacy inside the bedroom gets even better. I think that's a great place to close out this episode. That was awesome. Lots of good stuff. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at charting toward intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes until next time. 